Hello, this is the first in a series of screencasts that looks at basic concepts in statistics for sport and exercise scientists. Firstly, there are two key types of statistics. The first type are descriptive statistics, and these generally summarise the characteristics of a set of data. We usually summarise our data using the mean and the standard deviation of that data. So we may summarise the age of our participants in our research studies, the average height of our participants, the average body mass, etc. In the methodology section of any research study, you will find some descriptive statistics that describes the characteristics of the participants. Then we have inferential statistics. These are a bit more complex. With inferential statistics, we're able to make inferences from our sample to a larger population. It's worth keeping in mind that statistics do three things. They either describe things, so they describe data. They look for relationships between variables, so they explore the association between variables. Or they look for differences between data. Next we have the three key types of data. The first key type is nominal or categorical data. This is where we assign numbers to discrete categories. For example, in a research study that involves males and females, we may label the males number one and the females number two. Secondly, we have ordinal data. This is where we assign numbers to subjective ratings, and we often find these on questionnaires. So, one may be poor, four may be fair, and ten may be excellent. We often find these used in sports psychology, which often uses questionnaires. Finally, we have interval data, sometimes called scale data and sometimes called ratio data as well. This is the most common data that we use in the sports sciences because it involves real measurements. So things such as height, body mass, sprint time, blood lactate, VO2 max, are all examples of interval data. They're measured on some sort of scale. So then, if we just remind ourselves about our key types of variables, firstly we have independent variables. As a researcher, the independent variable is the thing that we manipulate. So we might be manipulating a group. So if we have males and females, we will be manipulating group. Or you might say we would be manipulating gender, because we're putting some people in one group, the male group, and some people in another group, the female group. Alternatively, we might manipulate some sort of treatment. So if we give some subjects a caffeine supplement and some subjects a carbohydrate supplement, we're, we're manipulating the treatment that they receive. Secondly, we have dependent variables. And the dependent variables are the things that we measure as the researcher. So things we commonly measure in the sports sciences might be time. So time taken to complete a marathon time taken to complete a 30 meter sprint for example. We might measure blood lactate at the end of a VO2 max test. We might measure body fat at the end of a training program, etc, etc. Essentially, we want to know what effect our manipulation of the independent variable has on our dependent variable. Generally in statistics we have parametric and non-parametric statistics or tests. Most of the time in sports science we will use parametric tests and to use parametric tests we have to agree to three key assumptions. The first assumption is that our samples display a normal distribution so we're always encouraged to check for signs of skewness or ketosis. The second condition that we have to meet is that our samples have similar variants so we're always encouraged to check for equality of our variances. And finally, our measurements are made on an interval scale. If any of the above assumptions are violated, then we must use some non-parametric statistics.